To God be the glory. As we assemble ourselves yet again for the purpose of worshiping God, we're thankful for yet another day. We're thankful for those who are visiting with us. Uh, thank you for coming our way. We hope, trust, and pray that you've been made to feel welcome. And we certainly are thankful that you are here with us at the Church of Christ that meets on Miami Gardens Drive. With God's word, you will only find one church. And that one church, that one body was in different locations. There are no denominations in the Bible. And as we think about that one God who sent his one son who died one time for the sins of the world. And when he shed his blood, he, Jesus the Christ, purchased the church. And so as we look at scriptures today and our lesson today on how you can become one of his, one of his disciples. You know, and again, if you want to really uh, follow a pattern. I'm going to plan this here, but then we'll, we'll expound upon it in just a few minutes. If you want to just follow the pattern of people, when they show you who they are, believe them. And in religion, people show who they are very quickly and easily. They will say, these are my disciples. People say that out loud. And say, I'm going out discipling. Be careful what you say. If you don't give it context that so that in and of itself is not a false statement, but you better make sure who are you following? Of whom are you from whom are you learning? And so I'm going to plant that seed with those two questions. And at the end of this lesson this morning and then again tonight, uh, would be the Lord's will. You will have a better understanding of discipleship, the root of discipleship, the relationship of the disciple. The result of discipleship as well. We'll hit a couple more hours later on tonight. So our lesson text this morning, it was read in your hearing. Uh, follow along. We'll have some brothers read some scriptures, most of whom will be on the screen for your convenience and your edification. Edification means to build you up. I am not here to entertain. I'm a gospel preacher. And so as a gospel preacher, I need to let you know the word of God. That is my that is my soul, S-O-L-E, and S-O-U-L job. Because that only job is to help you save your soul and for me to save mine as well. So if you're visiting with us, you've never been to the Church of Christ, welcome. Welcome. Again, don't just judge a book by a cover. What do I mean by that? He said, don't judge a book. No, no. Some people look at a sign and it may say free coffee. You go inside and that coffee's nasty. That's why it's free. My point is this. Just because something says Church of Christ, you still need to look inside. So when you, do, when you look at that cover, that name on a building, make sure it aligns with the word of God in every single aspect. Not just saying, I love Jesus. We got to make sure we do what God says, how God says do it. Our lesson text, John, the 15th chapter. As I said, some of this, for those of you that are new to uh, Miami Garden Church of Christ, we'll put most of this on the screen for your convenience. John chapter 15 and verse 5, the Bible records, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, without me, you can do nothing. As Brother Nelson read this in your hearing a little earlier, so eloquently and articulately, one of the things that's so important is I want to give you the contextual setting. What do I mean by contextual setting? What's going on? Context is what's around, you can say, the plane landed. And you want to make sure you understand, where did it land? <laughs> you get some context saying, as it approached the runway, the plane landed safely. Now you have full context. So what's going on when Jesus makes these statements? Well, first and foremost, it's the night before his crucifixion. The night before Jesus hung on the cross, died, shed his blood. It's a night before that. And as we think about that, he had just finished eating the Passover with the disciples and instituted the Lord's Supper. So the night before he was crucified, he had eaten, sat and ate the Passover meal with his disciples and he instituted the Lord's Supper, which we do every Lord's Day. Jesus told him, I'm going back. I'm going back to the Father. I have to go away. And this was something that they really didn't understand. You've been with us. You've shown us. You've taught us. Key word, taught. But he said, I got to go back. But they didn't understand that. They didn't know what was going to happen. 
That's why Jesus in John chapter 14 tells them, gives them some comforting words and we'll read in just a minute. He let them know that he, I'm going away, but I'm going to prepare a place for you. And so as Jesus does all of this in John 15, our context, he's telling them how you ought to live as my disciples. Amen. So the instructions that Jesus is giving them in John 15 is what you are going, what I expect of you, who I am, what I expect of you as my disciples and how you ought to live. And so let's go back to because the most comforting words, brothers, John chapter 14, beginning at verse one. So when you think about what Jesus with the context now, the night before his crucifixion and I'm going away, but I'm going to prepare a place for you. So that's troubling to them. That's why Jesus says in John chapter 14 and verse one, read, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Believe also in me. So Jesus speaking to his disciples, recognizing the fact that he's about to go away. He's about to be crucified. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Read. In my father's house are many mansions. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I if would have told not you. not so, I would have told you. I go. Here it is. I to go. To prepare a place for you. I got to go away. In order for the father's plan to be fulfilled, to be completed, I have to die. And I'm going away. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. Comforting words. Read. And if I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again. I, I will come again. Jesus is coming back again. Let me say that again. Jesus is coming back again. There will be a second, not a third, as some folks preach. There'll be a second coming. Jesus went away. He died. Shed his blood, was buried, rose again the third day. Those are the facts of the gospel. He said, I have to, I go to prepare a place for you. So heaven is a prepared place. Let me preach it. I knew y'all were going to do that for prepared people. You just don't happen to coincidentally make it to heaven. You don't luck up on heaven. He says, I go to prepare a place for you and I will come again. And receive you unto myself. And receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. That where I am, there ye may be also. Discipleship. Discipleship. I'm going to take you back to the original language. The Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew. The New Testament was originally written in Greek. Why do we take you there? So you can have a clear understanding of the word. So when you hear disciple, some people say, well, that's a follower. It's not just a follower. A disciple is not just a follower. The word discipline. If you are disciplined in your craft, you hear the word, the phrase, people perfect their craft. You know what you're doing. You're not doing it ignorantly. Ignorant means unknowing. So the word disciple defined from the Greek word mathetes. It's a noun. A noun. Person, place, thing. Y'all getting ready to go back to school. Remember that. That was free. A person, place, thing or event. So Mathetes, Mathetes, a noun, is a student, a pupil. I don't know if anybody use that word anymore, but they got a pupil progression plan. I remember that back in the day. We got educators. I don't know if you all still use words like that. But a pupil is a student, one who learns. So a disciple, the root definition of a disciple is you are oh, a student. So now whom, to whom are they learn, or from whom are they learning? Well, a disciple has a responsibility to do just that. Well, let me go back here. Before we go forward, let's just take that back. So we, let's stay here. Imagine sending your kids to school, K through 12, what, 12 years? Then they go to uh, university. You say, what'd you learn? Nothing. Here's Lopez in the kindergarten. Uh, got my, my brother Miguel, kindergarten through 12th grade. What'd you learn? Absolutely nothing. But you're a student. There's an expectation of a student, a pupil, to learn. Amen? So, the, so again, disciple by basic definition, mathetes, a learner, a student, a pupil. 
So what does a student do? Here's your verb, manthano, to learn and to understand. Oh, that's important because people talk about God. See, Jesus doesn't want us. He wants them to understand. Jesus taught his disciples. He taught his disciples by example. When he washed the disciples' feet, he taught them by direct instruction. They were not unlearned. They were not ignorant. There were things they did not understand. You just heard that in the contextual setting. That's why Jesus had to explain, I have to leave. They're like, where are you going? I go to prepare a place for you. There are things your kids may not understand. You have to teach them as parents. So as we think about discipleship today, now that you know what it means, and I'll ask you at the back door, everybody walks by and says, hello, I'm going to ask you what the word disciple means. Don't, don't run out that door. I'll be ready. Right we want you to learn. Why do we preach using book, chapter, and verse so you can learn? Not just come and be entertained. It's not, no, we're not in entertainment business. The church has to teach. So a disciple of Christ is a student of Christ. One who learns from Christ, one who understands who Christ is. Speaking of that, our three key points today, the root of discipleship. The root of discipleship. Where does it start? The relationship of the disciple. In time permitting, we'll look at the result of discipleship. So let's get into this. So we think about the root of discipleship. Please understand, Jesus says, brethren, John 15 and 1. Let's go back there. Give me John 15 and 1. I want you all to turn to John chapter 15. Say amen when you get there. I got plenty of time. Some of y'all are quick. You all know me. John 15 and 1. You're at John 15? Because see, again, if you are seeking to be a follower of Christ, a student of Christ, you need to know Christ. And he does not just say, show up and say, thank you, Lord, and you are a Christian. He does not just say, just you know, pray the sinner's prayer and you're a Christian. That's not biblical. He said, well, no, I, but I've heard that. Somebody uses a scripture, but you have to understand context. There was an ark in the Bible as well. Where's your ark? Did you all ride an ark to get here today? It's in the Bible, but you need to know context. Who's speaking, to whom they're speaking, what they're speaking about. There was an ark, and God gave instruction to a certain man to do a certain thing at a certain time. That's why none of you have an ark out there with a radio system inside of it, because some of y'all would have to upgrade. I know. The root of discipleship, John 15 and 1, read the Bible. I am the true vine. Jesus speaking, I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. And my father is the husbandman. And I put the, in parentheses the definition of husbandman so you would have a better understanding. Jesus saying, I am the true vine. So you mean to tell me if he says he's the true vine, there can be false. There can be people leading others down the wrong path. I am the true vine. One of the many I am statements from Jesus. And my father, look at the connection. You can't have Christ without God. You can't have God without Christ. And people seek to divide that. That's what the denomination means to divide. Well, no, God knows my heart, but yet why don't you follow Jesus then? Well, I, I believe in God, then why haven't you obeyed the gospel? So you can't separate it. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. My father's the one that planted this vine. There's nothing without my father. So the various I am statements, uh, go ahead and read the rest of that, brother. Every branch in me, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. He taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it. He purges it. That's all I need right now, brother. So the key verse, I'm gonna pivot off verse one. There's a lot in verses one through eight. We're gonna look at select verses this morning. We're gonna cap it off tonight. So Jesus says, "I am the true vine." So the root of discipleship, we need to know who Jesus is. And now, when, how does Jesus tell us who he is? And so Jesus, and I shared this a couple weeks back, Jesus in so many ways, and he even said it, I'm him. Jesus made it very clear. Oh, you, you, you're guessing? Okay, John 6 and 35. We don't have time to read all of this. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. No man's going to hunger to eat to this bread. He's not talking about physical bread, wonder, whatever brand you buy. I don't know if they still got wonder bread out there. You know what I'm talking about. He says, I'm the bread of life. An I am statement from Jesus, John 6 and verse 35. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He continues to let us know, I'm him. You want to follow John the Baptist? John the Baptist never promised to build a church. You want to follow Elijah Muhammad? Elijah Muhammad didn't die for your sins. You want to follow Mother Teresa? Mother Teresa died and she's still dead. 
You want to be a Catholic, the Pope's going to die. There's many have come before him that were the Holy Father. I put that in quotes. They died. They had to replace them. She says, I've only served. There's only one God. Amen. And we've seen this song. Our God, he is alive. In him we live and we survive. So again, I don't I use those specific examples not to make anyone feel badly that may be here, that may be following that. But do you understand? If you're going to be a disciple of something, you better understand who you're following. You better understand from from whence you're getting the teaching. And so Jesus says, not only I am the true vine. There is no uh, variableness in Jesus. There's no doubt because see faith and fear cannot coexist. We as Christians need to understand who we are and whose we are. So he said, first of all, I'm the true vine. Y'all got that? Amen. My, my father is the gardener. He planted this true vine. I am the bread of life. John 6, 35. I am the way, the truth and the life. John 14 and 6. Oh, he's not done. Jesus goes on to say, I am the good shepherd. John chapter 10 and verse 11. Oh, he's not done. I am the light of the world in the midst of darkness. I am the light of the world. John 8 and verse 12. Y'all still with me? So there is no doubt. You want to follow somebody other than Jesus? You go. You, you okay? You want some? You, my mama, grandma used to call it light bread. <laughs> some of y'all know. Some of y'all caught you doing light bread. Better be careful where you eat. <laughs> he is the bread of life. We don't want to. We don't have to spiritually hunger when we know Christ. The way, the truth, and the life. There's only one way. I remember when I first we moved out to the Bay Area in California. San Francisco has a lot of one-way streets. I went down the wrong way. That's a dangerous thing. You're going the wrong way on a one-way street. So, saints, we need to follow that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I am the good shepherd. See, a shepherd takes care of his sheep. So he is ahead of the sheepfold. Good shepherd. I am the light of the world. In the midst of a dark world, we have Christ. And so we, there's got to be authority. I love what Brother Devin uh, said in his prayer. May we submit to the authority of Christ. But Jesus says, I am Lord and master. Now, keep in mind the context of this. When he said, I am Lord and master, he had just washed the disciples' feet. And if you look at John 13, 13, go to John 13 and 13. I want you to hear this. This one is just, it's just something special. They're all special. But when in John 13 and 13, he had just washed the disciples' feet and they called him Lord and master. Look at what Jesus says. Basically, he's going to let them know after washing their feet. Now, imagine somebody washing your feet saying, I'm him. Because you think you're all that because you got your feet washed. Right? Like, yeah, you sit back. I don't know if you ever had your shoes shined or anything like that. Yeah, they put you up high. And they're, you know, typically in airports and all of that. So you're, up, you're at an elevated position. So he humbled himself, washed their feet. And look at what he said in John 13 and 13. Read. You call me master and Lord. You call me master and Lord. After feet, mind you, contact is critical. Read. And you say, well, you say, you say, well, you say it accurately. Why, Jesus? For so I am. For so I am. You call me Lord and master. You call me master and Lord. You say, well, you say accurately. You say correctly. For so I am. For so I am. And lastly, Jesus says, I am the resurrection. So brothers and sisters, visiting friends, the root of discipleship is knowing who Christ is. A disciple by definition is a pupil, is a student. So in someone who, under, the verb, manthano, to understand. Do you understand who Christ is? Because if you say to yourself or to others, starts with you, ownership, that Christ is just a good man who did some good things, but there's other great people as well, you're gonna miss out on salvation. In Acts chapter 4 and verses 12, Acts the fourth chapter, and the verses 12, if you are to be saved, remember, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. My father is the gardener, right? Well, then, how many ways can you be saved? The root of discipleship focus on understanding and knowing Christ. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, the Bible lets us know, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Salvation is only in Christ. Amen, children of God. Sorry to put you to sleep. There's only one Savior. And the same one that said, I am, I am, I am, I am. He is the source of our salvation. There is no, uh, neither is there salvation in any other. 
You want to go get some food after service today? You got a lot of choices. You want to go get some gas? You, you have a lot of choices. But brothers and sisters and visiting friends, salvation's only in Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name, no other, no other name, no other authority under heaven. And guess what? We're under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. The root of discipleship. I'll hit the nail one last time before we move on to our second of three points. The root of discipleship is knowing who Christ is. What did Peter say in Matthew 16 and verse 16? You are the Christ. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. If you don't know Jesus, how can you be his student? Imagine going to, so we're going to start school, I think, in less than a month now. I know kids are so excited. Some of them shaking their head now. Staff are just as excited <laughs> to go back. But my point is, imagine just showing up to a class and you expect to get a grade and you're not enrolled. And you, you sit there, you do all the work, you do all the good works, turn in your papers, all that. And they say, excuse me, you're not, you're not enrolled, but you're my teacher. I call you my teacher. You're not my student. That's what people are doing. They're doing all kind of great things, you know, many wonderful works. Matthew chapter 7, the Bible talks about that. We've cast out devils in your name. we prophesied taught in your name. We've done many wonderful works. Jesus said, I never knew you. You're not my pupil. You're in the wrong class. That's a sad commentary. And so we must know Jesus to be his disciple. And to know Jesus, brother, in John 7. To know Jesus, we need to know his doctrine. Turn to John chapter 7 and verse, start started verse 16. Remember what Jesus said, and he said, I am the true vine. And who's the gardener? Who's the gardener? My father is the husbandman. My father is the gardener. Don't forget that. Because, again, we talk, I made a statement in the beginning. Now, let me go ahead and break it down a little bit. If someone says to you that yeah, that's my disciple. No, 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 no. I'm a disciple of Christ. If I'm going to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'm teaching. We got to keep going back to the source. Because if we're not careful, you got people that are following man as if man is the, if he's him. I'm not him. I know him. Very important. This is how you get the division, even in the Lord's church. Well, we begin to elevate and people need to exalt. Be kind. Respect authority. Those are givens. But when in religion to know Jesus, know his doctrine. And when people are talking about we're discipling, for whom? And what are you teaching? Do you understand his doctrine? You ain't discipling for Christ if you're not teaching the gospel. If you're teaching some denomination, you, yeah, you're disciple for you. Amen. To know Jesus and know his doctrine. What did Jesus say in John chapter 7, beginning at verse 16? Watch it. John, the seventh chapter. We're going to start reading at verse 16. Listen to what Jesus said after, what, after his teaching. Verse 16 and 17. It's on the screen for your guidance as well and convenience. Read. Jesus answered them. Jesus answered them and said. My doctrine is not mine. Hold right there. My doctrine. Doctrine means teaching. My teaching is not mine. We're talking about the Messiah, the Savior. But again, I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. My doctrine, my teaching is not mine. Well, whose is it, Jesus? Read. But his that sent me. But his that sent me. Who sent Jesus? The father. I'm doing my father's will. Read. If any man will do his will, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. He shall know of the doctrine. He shall know of the teaching, whether it be of God, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. If Jesus took that, look at the humility, the obedience and the reverence and respect Jesus has. When somebody says to you, any church will do or whose, do whose doctrine, ask him, whose doctrine is that? Who, who's and have a Bible be good if you had a Bible with you. Who, whose doctrine is that that any church will do? Whose doctrine is that that you're teaching? If they say it's mine, we're like, good. You're, you're, you spoke correct. You spoke well. Well meaning accurately, because really, that's not God. See, that's why we take you to book, chapter, and verse. There's some honest and sincere, sincere people in here this morning. And I plead with you. I want you to see this. I'm just a messenger. 
The Bible is so simplistic. Jesus said, it's not my it's not my teaching. But yet he taught his disciples. But he let them know this is of God. You want to do the father's will? You got to come through me because I am the true vine. Look at what he does. He was no lack of confidence. So when we stand and speak boldly. We're saying, yes, I'm a gospel preacher teaching the will of God, teaching the word of God. Amen, saints. That's the confidence. But it's not mine. This is not my church. It's not Rick's church. It's the Lord's church. And the church is not this building. The church meets here. So when you break it down like that, people are like, oh, I never looked at it that way. That's why people play church. They're going through a routine. But the Bible is very clear. My doctrine, my teaching is not mine. So if we have point number one, the root of discipleship, check your notes. The root of discipleship is knowing who Christ is. He is the great I am. Knowing what Christ has done, the good shepherd, the bread of life, and all those I am statements, the true vine in the context of our lesson in John 15. But the father is the gardener. My teaching is not mine. If you follow my father, you will know that the teaching is of God. So now I say. Outside of Christ and be one of his disciples. The branches grow out of the vine. And so, so as, a, as we as disciples of Christ, we that have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have to grow. Saints, we have to grow. Second Peter chapter three and verse 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Growth as a disciple of Jesus Christ. The young in Christ. We have those that have been baptized here within the past year. You got you have to grow to all the babes in Christ. We need you in that new convert class. Amen, saints. We need your new convert class so you can you can understand the basics because the devil is going to be busy. He's always busy. You need to know the basics. Sometimes people fall away because they don't know the basics. And don't think the devil's not going to try you. That's like you going to work saying no one's going to try you. Right. Keep on. People are going to try you. First Peter chapter two, beginning at verse one. See, the young in the faith must grow just like a newborn baby. First Peter two, beginning at verse one. Read Wherefore, laying aside all malice, we got to lay aside all malice. See, again, malice. You think about somebody's upset you and you think about uh, malice. Uh, it's that inner feeling of wanting to hurt or respond in some way for a negative effect or an adverse effect on somebody else. Malice. It's a get back. I don't know what they're using now. Clap back, whatever y'all do, whatever y'all say. I try to stay hip, but I can't. Y'all are just too fast for me. But, you know, people got to, you know, you're going to go, you know, again, diss, right? Is that good? Is that what was going on with Drake and Kendrick? People are like, how do you know? Which is, all right. So you got, you got, you got to come back. You got, got to come back with something. So malice. I want to hurt. So you, oh, you, you kick my dog. Well, you, you better watch your cat. That's not, that's not a child of God. That's not our, but that's not what we should be. So we have to grow. So in order to grow, we got to get rid of some. We got to lay aside some stuff. First Peter two, Gail, beginning of verse one. There's a love Kendrick and, and Dip Drake. Uh, wherefore laying aside, come on. All malice. All malice. Get rid of it. And all guile. And all guile. Guile is deceit. Don't try to trick people. Did I see you there? No, that wasn't me. I look just like you. <laughs> no, what was me? Somebody look. All uh, malice, don't seek to hurt people. All uh, guile, don't seek to deceive or trick people. Read. And hypocrisy. Hypocrisies. Hypocrisy comes from the, the Greek word that means an actor. You say one thing and do another. You talk the talk, but you don't walk the walk. So lay aside not only a thing, seeking to hurt somebody, lay aside all trickery and deceit. Hypocrisies. Don't just say one thing and do another. Don't be phony. Read. And envy. Envy. If somebody else has it, you don't. Don't feel badly. Just say, thank God. I'm glad you got a new car. Now I can have a ride. It's all in the perspective. Miguel, buy as many new cars as you want, brother. I need a ride. I'll park mine. <laughs> as his wife says, no, no, no mas. <laughs> no more. So envy. 
that, that feeling of, you know, you're like, I'm so happy for you. Oh, you found the man of your dreams, a woman of your dreams, you know, respectively. You understand that. I'm so happy for you. No, if you're not happy, don't say it. Envy. So lay, put that aside. Read. And all evil speaking. And just in case you miss anything, and all evil speaking. And all he would put it all aside so that we may do what? Here we go. As newborn babies. Oh, as newborn babies. You know, a newborn baby's going to cry and uh, they want to eat. They need nourishment. So as disciples, again, students, pupils, we want to learn. We want to grow. We should hunger for knowing about God's word. It's like a baby desires it. As newborn babes, let's, let's hustle on, Gail. Read. Desire the sincere desire. milk of the Don't just say, well, okay, every now and then. No, you desire. I bet you're going to eat today. Now, some of you are fasting. We don't need to know. That's your business. But I would dare say that most of this room is going to eat at some point today. Some of you may think about it right now. I'm standing in the way. You desire that. You, you have a hunger. You have a thirst. As newborn babes desire the, the sincere milk of the word. Why? That you may grow thereby. That's where you grow. The word of God. Being disciples. Let's hasten on. The mature Christian must grow. We'll talk more about this tonight. The mature Christian must grow as well. Just because you've been in the church for so many years. Hebrews chapter 5, beginning at verse 12, the Bible lets us know, when the time for you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. See, there was one time, you know, my mama, when we grew up, she gave us Gerber's baby food and all this other stuff. We had to mash the food down and make sure that we could handle it. You understand what I'm talking about? Then we grew up in Ohio. Then we got to the States. Meat. So there's so what the Hebrew writer is saying is you are going, you should be eating some grown people food, Larry. I'm just use an example, brother. And we got to give you a bottle of milk. You know, attendance is important. Okay, you're a grown man. Growing up, Bugs Bunny had a, had, there was a, a character, it was like a grown man deceiving, trying to deceive Bugs Bunny. And again, I'm just using the example of the cartoon, the animation. He's there with a beard and a cigar with like a little bit of baby carrot trying to trick Bugs Bunny. Some of you might have seen that one. But my point is, it was obvious he was not a baby. And that's how comical and sadly, sad it is when Christians who ought to be mature have to be told about some of the fundamentals. And just in case we miss you tonight, some of the fundamentals of the faith. For the time you ought to be teachers. Don't listen, don't focus on me, focus on the word. You, we gotta give you milk. Here you go, Larry, here you go. He's like, I'm a grown man, quit talking to me that way. Well, yeah. Larry will say, quit, use another example, use somebody else. <laughs> you need milk, y'all all right? Why do you need milk? Because the Bible says, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful. In the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, but strong meat belonging to them that are of full age, mature. Even those who by reason of use, you got to use it, use it or lose it. We got to exercise our faith by praying, by forgiving one another, by the way in which we live. That's what Jesus was saying to his disciples. I need you to live a certain way. I'm the true vine. You're the branches. Without me, you are nothing. A branch cannot grow out apart from the vine. We got to stay connected, fellowship, and stay connected to Jesus, who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Let me close with this. We, we just can't do it alone. Remember last week's lesson? This sequential teaching, if you will. Last week, our lesson text was Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man that appears to be right. Well, I don't see anything wrong with it. That's your problem. You don't see anything wrong with it. But God does. God sees a big problem with denominationalism. There is a big problem with that. Just because you don't see anything wrong with it doesn't make it right. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I don't think anybody wants to be eternally separated from God. The Messianic prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 53 and 6 Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. Keep in mind the, the relationship of the disciple. Without the vine, we're nothing. Just like sheep. The sheep is not the smartest animal in the animal kingdom. Believe me. We need a shepherd. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. Mankind cannot do it alone. Jeremiah chapter 10. Get these scriptures down. 
Jeremiah, the 10th chapter and verse 23. And I put them on the screen so you can just follow sequentially and see. We need a sheep, a shepherd. We as mankind, see, we that are Christian sheep need a shepherd. But just in case you miss it, mankind needs guidance. I got it. You ever said that? You said, I got it, but you didn't have it? Kind of fake it till you make it? No. You ain't going to fake your way into heaven. Jeremiah 10 and verse 23. Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man, mankind, is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. A long time ago, I saw a bumper sticker. It's very appropriate for what we're talking about today. No Christ, K-N-O-W. No Christ, no peace. No Christ, no peace. Let that simmer for a minute. We as children of God must teach this. We must teach Jesus Christ and him crucified. We must teach that you got to do right by God. You can't just do your own thing. And so as we close, the result of discipleship, we got to bear fruit. The root of discipleship, no Jesus. Amen. I'm wrapping. I'm wrapping up. No Jesus. K-N-O-W. Because without Jesus, no Jesus, N-O, no N-O salvation. Know who he is. He is. He's him. The relationship of the disciple, we have to continue to be a student. We're forever learning. We'll never graduate from Christianity. We'll never get to the point where we're like, okay, I've, okay, I've, ooh, I got my certification. <laughs> no, faithfulness. When God calls us home, that's when we call it, we call it quits. We must bear fruit. What are those fruit? I'm going to put them all on the screen for your notes. We got to bear good fruit. That the way in which we live our lives, that love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, or self-control against such there is no law. We have to embody this. We should emit this in the way we act. You should not be the uncontrollable one on the job. Amen. The one that's acting a fool, the biggest fool at work or at school. Oh, y'all got me. Here we go again. Y'all going to take it. I've heard Christians say this foolish statement. Oh, y'all going to oh, get the Jesus out of me. Well, the devil's in you. Stop that. So there's a way in which we should act as Christians. Because of seed, Luke 8 and verse 11 is the word of God. The seed, it's not on your screen, but you, can, but you can look it up. Luke 8 and 11, the seed is the word of God. We'll put that right here. See, the father's a husbandman, the father's a gardener. The seed is the word of God. God's not going to plant the word of God and sprout up all kind of other stuff. So when the word of God lands on good ground, parable of the sower, but those that are on the good ground are they which an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. The result of discipleship, that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Walk means to live, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Keep growing. Keep growing. And then you gain that wisdom. Song leader, come on. The wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle. See, knowledge is not enough. We need some wisdom. So you got, I don't know if you've ever had a class where the professor knew his or her stuff, but they didn't have the wisdom to teach it the right way. You can sit back and say, open your book. We're going to read this page, this page, this page. You're just bored to death. My point is you got to use wisdom. I'm using wisdom right now. Huh. The wisdom that's from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, easy to be approached. Be approachable, ch children of God. You ain't got to be an extrovert, but you got to be approachable. Easy to be entreated. This is the calling card of children of God, if you will. Full of mercy. Mercy is not getting what we deserve. Show mercy on people. Oh, that was the last one. I got you. You should have no joy in playing gotcha. What can I do to help you? Good fruits without partiality. Partiality, no respect of person. And without hypocrisy, as we talked about earlier. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. In closing, 
the root of discipleship is knowing who Jesus is. The relationship of the disciple, we are the branches. He is the vine. Without him, we're nothing. And lastly, the result of discipleship, we got to bear fruit. If we don't bear fruit, we're worthy of nothing but to be cut down. And God has shown us his mercy. He showed us his mercy when he died on the cross. When Jesus comforted him in John 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go, I will, I will come back again and you to, to receive you unto myself. In other words, I'm leaving, but I'm coming back. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins? Do you believe that with all your heart? Because you got to know who Jesus is. And that's the root of discipleship. That's step one. I believe in Jesus. Well, you have to hear and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. You not only see Lord and master, but if he's going to be your Lord and master, you got you to do what he says. You must hear and believe that he died, shed his blood, was buried, rose again the third day. Having heard and believed that, are you willing today? There's an urgency today. I said last week, I'll say it again now. There's a lot being said in this election year. A pulpit is not political. Believe in Christ. But as citizens, you have an individual right and privilege to vote. But nobody should lose their life. We do not promote violence ever or condone it ever. And regardless of your political beliefs, a man was at a public event outside with his family, a fireman, and he lost his life. He has a soul. Don't know if he was a Christian or not. My point is tomorrow is not promised to any of us. So there is an urgency. There is an urgency. So once you've heard and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, are you willing to change your mind? I want to do right by God. I've done a lot of stuff. You don't understand, preacher. I need, to, I need you. To, if I tell you everything I did, you'd probably kick me out here. No, I wouldn't. Because I know the one who is rich in mercy. And you maybe have somebody sitting here today saying, I need to do right. Well, repentance is just that. You then, it leads you to confessing. Not confessing everything you've done. We ain't got out that much time. You need to confess that Jesus Christ is Son of God. You need to confess Jesus Christ, Son of God. In Matthew 10, verse 32, Jesus said, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. Jesus conversely said, You deny me, I will deny you. And upon that confession today, we will baptize you. You'll be immersed in water. And baptism, listen, washes away all your sins. That's the opportunity. And you become a disciple of Christ, a student. Acts 11 and 26, you become a Christian today. Knowing, remember a disciple, noun and verb. You're a disciple, you're a student, you're a pupil. You learn and understand. I understand what I did why I did it, and where I am. You become a disciple of Jesus Christ. And as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you can sing openly, honestly, I'll be a friend to Jesus. See, a friend, there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And that friend is none other than Jesus Christ. The, the sermon is yours. If you need to respond in any way, please come right now. Together stand and sing. I'll be a friend to Jesus.